It's me, Big Dave. And today we're doing another Raid Channel Legends video. And specifically, I'm going over Hydra Rebalance that dropped a couple of days ago. So um, I've talked to a couple of my clannies, a couple of other players about this so I can get a better idea how people feel about this. And then, yeah, so we'll just get started going over it. We'll watch the video. We'll start with the end of the video rather than dissect as we go so we can go and look at it as a whole. So yeah, we'll just get into it, get started and uh, hope you guys enjoy. So, get into it. Hey everyone, we've got a different kind of update preview for you today. We're showing off some balance changes coming to the Hydra and a few other areas of the game. Along the way, we'll explain why we're making these changes, but here's a quick overview. The current meta is way too limiting to players who don't have specific champions in their collection. We want you to experiment with different tactics and teams, switching things up each week. Let's dive in and take a closer look at what's coming. First up, we're setting the turn limit at 1,000 turns. Good. Really good. I like this. So everyone is the damage is going to be lower for people, which means it's not it's going to be in the billions, but it's not going to be silly. So this is good. This is a good change. I'll give them this. This is a decent change. Auto battling the Hydra can easily take over an hour. Forty minutes. Manually it takes over an hour. <laughs> it can take up to two hours. So yeah. So we're aiming to cut down the time by at least half an hour. You'll now need to build teams that do damage faster rather than teams built for a war of attrition. With a few adjustments, you'll have no problem reaching the damage numbers needed to get your usual. Not true. Definitely not true. People are gonna people are struggling here now. Guaranteed. There's no there's no question about it. Dual rewards. Moving on. We're changing how the serpent's will buff works. Most importantly, and heads up here it comes. And brace yourselves, folks. It now reduces damage by 100 percent for a newly grown Hydra head. Yep, you read that right. Complete damage reduction. You won't be able to nuke a newly grown head straight out of the gate anymore. Hold on though, there's good news too. If two heads regrow at the same time, only one of them will get the Serpent's Will buff. Champions have gotten stronger since the Hydra initially reared its heads. What with Awakening, Empowerment, and Mythical Champions joining the fray. We were seeing Hydra heads nuked as soon as they rejoined the battle, even with the 75% damage reduction. So to make the fight even and bring back- I don't know where they got that from because I don't know anyone who does that. That must be right at the end of the end game. I, I can't. I have never, I have never killed a head when it's had that had surface will on ever. So I don't know where they're getting this from. And I would consider myself to be late game or end game, but I don't know where they get this from. This is literally this must be all the end game players because I've never seen this. So, okay, yeah. And the argument of this is, is that if you've got like a nine k Harima doing that kind of damage, you probably deserve to be able to do it if you've got that kind of gear. So, don't quite get this. Um, this is not completely true. This I have never nuked a head coming coming out of the gate ever. So I don't know where they got this one from, but clearly it happens for a small small percentage of players. If anyone has done this, let me know in the comment section. I can guarantee there won't be many. Back some of the challenge that's been lost due to the game's evolution. The Hydra is getting a little stronger too. We're also making changes to digestion and devouring. You know how late on in the battle your champions start getting digested on a two-turn countdown? Well, for every subsequent time they get digested after that first two-turn countdown, the damage you'll need to do to free your champion increases. Like with Serpent's Will, digestion and devouring lost much of its- This is, this is, this is well overkill. That every time when you get to the end, now theoretically, if you get there with the damage you need, this doesn't matter. And this is what happens the way it is for me at the moment. I get to this point when I get eaten and I've already done my damage, so I don't mind dying. But will you be able to get the damage before you get this point? Because most people get to this point don't get past it. There's a few 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 of my clients who can go full turn full turn on like normal and hard and some of them on brutal. Um, but it's not it's this is gonna be rough. You're gonna have to double the damage. This is gonna be rough. It's intended challenge over time as more powerful champions and features were introduced. It was always meant to be one of the Hydra's key mechanics and an ever-present threat. But it became really easy to rescue allies that were being digested. So, we're bringing that fear back into digestion. Taunts won't help. Yeah, um... Yeah, it's that, 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 that serpent's will is going to be rough. Um, the chances of killing two heads at the same time, yeah, good luck with that one. Um, 
yeah, they've um, that's going to be yeah, that's very going to be very very rough. Um, so yeah, help anymore either. The Hydra has shed its thin skin, and petty insults will no longer distract it from a delicious champion meal sat right in front of it. In short, once a champion receives the mark of the Hydra debuff, they become public enemy number one, and Taunt isn't going to do anything about it. Taunt is a cool mechanic, but new champ was a cool mechanic you've now ruined it the 90 percent of people who use it use it here there's the I, I still use it for iron twins and shogun's grove because it just makes it a bit easier but you've you've now taken oh yeah you're right, it is a really a really cool diva but now they've ruined it for a lot of free to play i know a lot of players who build who built the wixwell comp on this now wixwell's obviously gone obviously but we'll get to that in a second but yeah this is this i feel is the biggest one that for me personally not for me personally for, for people i've spoken to that this people were running this and now it's it now it's now it's gone now you're gonna this was effectively your sort of back when clamos was using budget and killables that's what this was a way of getting t champs in there you still had to build emic and Nia really good though you had to put resistance or protection on them for it to work properly but yeah this is um then you would sit there for hours and hours doing it though so that was that's why i didn't ever go for it and i'm glad i didn't to be honest because this is yeah this is massive for the the free to play mid game to late game progression through hydra yeah this is this is gonna hurt really gonna hurt it being combinations emerged that could totally negate the mark of the hydra less cool yeah but you may taunt for a reason what what is it used for just for bosses now is that it is that all it's used for now um, and the chances are you give us newt, so you don't really need it there. So you've effectively you've effectively made taunt meta by putting it here and now taking it away. This one I really don't understand, but clearly there's numbers being done with it that are silly. I can Wixwell comps, but you've nerfed Wixwell, so I don't see the point of you nerfing this. So it's not all bad news though. Your team's AI will now prioritize attacking the head that is digesting. It already does this though, I think, doesn't it? So then they have already added this, so yeah. When you're running in auto battle mode, teamwork makes the dream work. Exposed necks are also getting a rework. From now on, Exposed Next will have a set HP value that is double the original head's HP. Once that value reaches zero, the head will immediately regrow. With constantly regrowing Hydra heads, you'll need to think on your feet and have tactics in place for all potential scenarios. Oh, man. Um, this, uh, is a double-edged sword, I think. Um, does that mean, does this, is it still on a turn meter bar? So if you don't do the damage, it comes back anyway. If you're like me, I, um, my biggest hitter here is probably Taras, and he does about a million damage on a decapitated head. That doesn't cover any of the heads. Um, I'd have to have a look at this. Um, if you're doing insane damage... Like, where you've got three or four damages, like Thor, Trunder, and all that kind of good stuff. Are you going to hit it? Well, yeah. So, but the way you look at it, the lowest head on Nightmare is 2.5 million, which is mischief. Which means five. So, you'll get five million damage for every time you kill that head. Um, the Suffering head, the worst head, that's got a, a stupid pool of HP. So, does it... I'm, I'm, I'm still unsure how this is actually going to work. Does it mean it's going to be... Is it still going to have the turn meter bar? Or is it going to be just... You do the damage and that's it. So, I don't know. I'm a bit confused on this one. Um, I don't do silly, silly damage. My Garrel does about... 400k on decapitated head. 500k per head. So, that's not even close. And I need the A2 for that. I would say probably there's about 400k on the A1. So, yeah, I'm not doing the damage anywhere near doing the damage it needs. But... I'll have to have a look at this when it drops next week, and I will be going over this to see how bad it actually is. So I'm, I'm doing video, I've done Kyra this week, and I'm gonna save, I, I save all of my, my higher scores. I will show you what I did before the nerf and what I do post, so you have a fair idea. Because it's gonna be a, a lot, 50, 60%, 40, 50%, I would say I'm gonna lose, probably. But I, I still should be all right, but for most players, I, it's going to affect a lot of players this is so yeah hydra battles are about to get much tougher but the changes yeah I, I get making it tougher and i did more champs to the pool 
But are we still going to be in the same position afterwards? Is Trunda still going to be the best nuka for this? Because we're getting that. Don't stop there. We've got a few more lined up to help keep things balanced, starting with shields. Shields will now receive a cap of one million points. This cap, I don't know got to say one million points. Is cap is separate for shields placed by artifacts and shields placed by skills, though. So you could get up to two million points of shield. These caps are still big enough to ensure powerful builds remain viable for taking on the Demon Lord and the Hydra, but they'll not be as game-breaking as before. And lastly... Right. Clan boss should be okay. You won't get more turns. From what I understand and what I've seen, you won't get more turns. So you, you'll go to a certain point and that will be where you end. So you'll need more damage. Um, some of the other content creators seem to think that this is a massive for clan boss. I don't I don't think it changes a great deal. I still think you'll be able to one key. Um, like I don't run Wix well. I didn't do the fusion. In a way, I'm glad I didn't know. Um, but yeah, this is this will be good for this will be good for clan boss. It'll be okay for clan boss. It basically kills the Yannicka comp. So Yannicka is now forget Yannicka, put her in a vault, or just use her for Sintron. She's now useless. Because she'll only do nowhere near the same damage. And this is where the rework now coming to Trundo. I'm still not convinced she's going to make, they've nerfed her that much, so we'll just get into it. We come to everyone's favorite dwarven warrior herself, Trunda Guilt Mallet. Don't worry, we're not nerfing her into oblivion. We're One of my clannies has got her, and he's absolutely petrified that they've killed her. I don't think they have. I generally don't. So we're just rebalancing some of her skills to keep her damage numbers in Hydra battles more reasonable. Starting with her default skill, Golden Mallet. Trunda will now have a 50% chance to place a stun debuff on both hits. Again, you don't build Trunda for accuracy because you want that double hit to land and that's still the same bit principle. If you could put a little bit of accuracy on her, if you wanted that to work in content, but the chances are you don't, so. A little upgrade, but a neat one for PvP. Trunda's- Why is it, she's, she's sitting in the Hefrak there? A Hefrak not in stone skin, there's a first. <laughs> That second skill, Cloak of Ages, will now ignore 50% of each target's defense on her second hit. However, the caveat here is that it will only ever be a normal hit. It's still big damage, but it won't be quite as astronomical as they have been before. I still think it's going to be high, and I'll show you why in a second. Four, Forge Rhythm, Trunda's third skill, now places consistent HP burn debuffs, and both hits from this skill deal 50% more damage to enemies under a stone skin shield. Another neat boot. I'm a bit confused. Stone skin shield is what you get at nine, isn't it? You don't get stone skin shield at six. So does it ignore stone skin? I don't think it does, but it'll hit through the shield. I'm a little bit confused on that one too. I'm not. I only use stone skin like two times, and I'm not completely. I'm not completely sure on what it actually does. But does it mean she now ignores stone skin? Again, I'll test this. My clan has got her, so we'll test this. Um, so yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure how this is gonna work boost to her overall kit. And finally, her passive skill now increases Trenda's attack by 5%. For each stun or HP burn debuff she places on it. So for normal and hard, this is gonna be massive. The chances are you're not building a for accuracy if you're running up below that, because you need like 250 and you're not gonna be running that much accuracy. Unless you decide that you wanna use her HP burn, that's entirely up to you. Chances are my thinking is this like the HP burn, what would you need? Uh, so you'd only need four, five, three times in these to land, and she's already there. So yeah, a nice damage increase. So she's probably gonna, it's probably gonna land somewhere. So yeah, the speed and the uh, and the so five HP burns. So yeah, that won't take long if you have built it for a little bit of accuracy. But again, do you want to build it for accuracy? So I I Enemies. Her speed will still be increased as well, both by stun and HP burn debuffs. All in all, Trundle isn't going anywhere. We still expect her to be an excellent choice for Hydra battles and the arena. We tested a ton of early. Right. Okay. So again, very clever how they've done this. So this, uh, I think they've taken a clone of somebody's team. Someone said it could be Scratch's account. I, I personally don't know. Um, but if we look at the time. Four minutes in, and they reckon the fight's gonna last what? Uh, Twenty minutes to thirty minutes a fight, and she's already done. F 
and she's already done 250 million. Well, she's done all the damage there, pretty much. So she's still going to be doing billions. So if you use this as an example, but we don't know whose account this is. Looking at this, the fact that there's a plus four and a plus four trunder there, um, my thinking is it's an end game player. But the fact it's not a plus four arbiter does worry me a little bit. But um, yeah, that's and a full fully awakened one too. So yeah, um, she's still going to do billions of damage. I think, regardless. So mid and late game champion rosters and that's team comp hard. So she's done in about quad triple the time. She's done triple the damage. So she's going to be doing billions on this one too. So you're looking at billions on hard positions when making these changes. Hugh, brutal. Yeah, you're still looking at nearly a billion. You're not looking at tens of billions by the looks of it. That's me rough math in this. Um, they reckon a fight's going to be what twenty to thirty minutes a fight. Just using the timer and roughly working it out, you're looking at about a billion for Brutal. Our results showed things will get better. You'll and here, you're looking at less than a billion. Big Because it's Nightmare. So, again, she's not going to be able to quite have the output. So, they've effectively nerfed her down from about 10 billion to about 1 billion. So, yeah, they have nerfed her. Still think she's going to be the best. But this is me math. This is me rough math in it rough math in it now i won't know until i i'm gonna have a look at my clan he doesn't he doesn't want normal we're gonna look at that before and after and we'll have an idea we don't have a plus four and we don't have a six star crushing rend on it so yeah so this is it's gonna be a lot less than this but yeah they've subsequently nerfed that i still think she's gonna be up there um does it mean there's gonna be somebody else there with her could you do this with the taras for argument's sake yeah, I think it could. If you've got two Yumikos, that is. Um, again, a lot of the, a lot of my clients say, why can't we just change Yumiko? Or why can't we allow other champs to be able to do what Yumiko does? Um, the problem, like the argument to that would be, is that she is a void in her, in her respect, but Kaima should be allowed. I understand... Like, there's no epics that do it. And the other two are Painkeeper and Renegade. Now, why can't Kaima reset Renegade? Oh, can he? Maybe he can. Um, in, in that respect, this should be allowed if you've got two Kaimars, I think. Um, I only have one. So I'm not gonna, it's not going to affect me at all. But if you run a Renegade, resetting him so he keeps going, I can't see why that can't be allowed. You're allowing it with a Void. The hardest thing in the game to get so why not allow it with normal kaima that's what i think personally um again you allow us to do it everywhere else but why not here like most like i wouldn't say everyone's got kaima you know but you know or make a champ like you you're doing lamasu now from the seeds and she can reset something you know i'm considering using her on manual on normal to try that theory to run her with a Kaima, so we're, re we're resetting constantly. So Kaima resets her, she resets him. At least that's my thinking. But again, trying to get the mass who's going to be hard work. So, yeah, does she actually go down? No, I'm not entirely sure. But um, personally, yeah. So we'll just finish this off. You'll still be able to earn Hydra chests and milestone rewards in Hydra Clash, and you'll spend less time. Put shards in you. Come on, put some shards in you. It's a week. It's a week. Come on, just put something in you. Like, put the quartz in you. Don't put it in class, put it in you. That's what I think they should do, but they won't. They won't do it. You know, primals are hard, hard work to get. Like, what, three places in the game? What, live, curve city, and that's it. Or oh, hydro class chests the, when you win. So, put them in you. Put the stones, you know, take away one piece of gear, put quartz in you. On the higher difficulties, put them lower and lower difficulties. So at least giving free to play players a chance to get primals. Not gonna happen. So I'm fighting the Hydra each week. As always, we'll be keeping an eye on your feet. You, you you've got to put four to fight. Well, before you were putting a whole day into doing this. Now you might have a couple of hours into doing this. But reward people for doing it, because if you nerf it into the ground, at least make it so that you incentivize players to it. Gear just. A gear, the gear is good, like, like, don't get me wrong, but add like a shard or something in you. 
at least incentivize people wanting to hit my, to, to wanting to hit it, because it feels like a lot of, a lot of clans don't. You know, uh, my clan does, but we've drawn a whale clan this week, so it's pretty much an opt out for us. Because like, what's the point pushing it when you're up against somebody that's going to do tens of hundreds of billions every time every time you run it? So yeah. Feedback and monitoring game data to see how these changes affect Hydra battles overall. We hope this preview has been useful for you and will help you prepare for more battles against the Hydra. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more raid news. Until then, happy raiding. Hey everyone. Right. Final thoughts. Uh, there were some positives mostly negative i think um again i feel for the guys who've uh who've built torn teams yeah you yeah you, you're done that's it it's done you're gonna have to build something else um i do feel for those players that i don't understand why they've done this to taunt it's like uh, how many instances of players are using it to do billions of damage the problem is you've Taking maybe what one percent of those players are using taunt to get silly damage with like trunders and all that kind of stuff, but most people are using it just to get through it. So, yeah, you've yeah, that's that that's the ones I feel like more sorry for, because that is like I almost did it myself about a year with about what, six or seven months ago, but I opted out of it because I ended up pulling Taras and I was like, right, no, I'm gonna try it. Going to try it the old fashioned way by just raw damage. Like, I've got lucky, I've pulled an ST avoid, you know. Um, like, though, I'm eventually I'm going to get Carnage and he's going to be good here. You know, there's a lot of mythicals who are good here, but that's, you know, trying to pull mythicals is even more difficult. Um, personally, yeah, this, it's those guys I, I do feel sorry for. There's going to be a lot of players who are going to end up leaving the game because of this. They're gonna no next week. You effectively, if if Emic is your is your damage every week, then you can forget about it. You're gonna have to rechange your comms completely, um, which is not good. It's genuinely not good. Do I think Trunder's less effective now? Yes. Do I think somebody else is gonna replace her? No. I don't think so. No, I'll put my neck on the line on this one. I don't think much is gonna change apart from the scores. Trunder is still going to be, people are going to run Trunder next week and she's going to do, instead of doing 10 billion, she's going to do like one or maybe below or 2 billion. She's not going to do 10 billion, which means then is that if you're doing a billion without her and there are comps that can, I think there's going to be other champs who maybe come into the equation with her now. I think, I hope that's the case. Like maybe like, but the argument is, is that the, the champs that we're going to uh, appease are probably going to be voids, which is like, well, 90% of players probably don't have. So I'll have a look at this next week when it drops. You know, I'm, uh, I'm keeping an eye on this. I've got people who I know use this comp. Um, like, it's good for our clan because a lot of my clan don't have her. Um, some do, but most of the guys use like Graja, HP burn Sulfuri on that level, um, but it's gonna is it gonna sway towards damage? Yeah, but most of us are gonna try what we already have and then redo for damage later on. Damage is difficult to do because it's keeping them alive. It's really difficult. Like I run four supports and two attackers on Nightmare, and my two damage dealers die all the time. Like I have no way of keeping them alive because I don't have any S tier champs to reset so they can cycle better because. Yeah, once that head hits you, you haven't got a decrease attack on which I don't run. Yeah, that's it, it's done. So yeah, it's um it's definitely gonna be interesting to see what they do with this. Um personally I'm uh I for me I don't think much is gonna change. I still think I'm gonna do my one point two billion, but it's not about me. It's about the players who don't make the one point two billion who now who've now been hit again. No, it's hit free to play badly, I think. I don't... If it comes back that she hits, what, well, for half or a quarter, would people be happy? No. No one's ever happy. No. But she won't be hitting silly damage. So that's, that's good. 
But again, I think the rework needed to come through Yumiko. But again, I'm biased. I don't have a. If I had, would I want it to be changed? Probably not. You know, I'll be honest there. But that's the problem. Yumiko is setting us up. You take that mechanic out of Yumiko, and then we won't. Trunda wouldn't. Trunda wouldn't be an option. But no, the fact that voids are the hardest thing in the game to get, and you've got to wail in order to get two or three of something. You know, like I've like I've only ever pulled two dupes in Void, I think, you know, one, like it's, yeah, and that was Yakal, so, you know, I've been playing the game for four years, so, yeah, do the math, man, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to affect a lot of players, um, it's definitely going to affect guys in my clan, um, but, m I say a few of them, uh, but I'll be looking over to see what her damage is like, post and, post, uh, before and after, or, you know, past and present, if you will, um, I think it's going to be less and I think other champions are going to come up to scratch with her. That's what I think will happen. Um, do I think damage will drop considerably? Absolutely. I would probably say 30 to 40% you're going to lose. That's what I'm going to preempt. The Serpents will, um, again, I, have, I don't know what they're smoking when they were saying that. I don't know a single person that does that, that hits through the damage mitigation. Maybe the one percent do, maybe they probably do, but I don't know what they're looking at. I generally don't. What killing heads with a seventy-five reduction? Come on, that's what. If it's like Trunder and Arima, maybe, but I don't know anyone that does it. So I don't know. The the hundred percent is effectively they've looked at it and they've probably seen why the damage is excessive, like your high high damage. Maybe that's what it is, but I don't know anyone that does it. So, yeah, the 100%, I like what I would like to see, though. Instead of it being heads appearing together, if if they die, because if they die, if you kill three of them, and they all come up at different times, only one Serpent's Will should be allowed. Now, that's easy enough to call. That's what I think it should be. But coming up together, yeah, good luck with that. There's a thing called speed tuning. So if your champ comes in between the two heads... That's not exactly, that's a little bit unfair on players. So make it so that Serpent's Will, the damage, is on one. I can absolutely guarantee you, if I kill um, Mischief and Torment together, their speed is different. Their speed is different in the game. So they're not going to come up at the same time, not unless I manipulate their turn meter. For me, only one, if they come up and there's one Serpent's Will out, nobody else should have it. And that's not hard to call into a game. It's not. That's how it should be. But coming up together, we've got no chance. You've got very... I can count on one hand how many times I've seen that happen to me, and it's not many. Like four or five, maybe five times I see it in a match, maybe. If you're really, really lucky, yeah, that Serpent's Will. When you decapitate heads consecutively by doing too much damage, and then the damage threshold, again, you have to test that. That, that really confuses me. Um... That I don't do that much damage now anyway. So I'm probably going to be alright on doing damage to decapitated heads. Um, I won't be doing silly damage. But if you think about it. Mischief you'll be doing 5 million damage every time he dies. Theoretically. And if that's the case. No you get. So for every head you're going to be looking. Yeah I think I, I think that's a, that might work well. But for me, yeah, get rid of the Serpent's Will on everyone. Because that's going to happen. That is going to happen. And you're going to be stood there on auto, literally, knock it off auto, not to use any of your big skills. Because if you leave it on auto, and they come back up, and they've all got it, and you use your big AoE, that's it gone for three, two to three turns. So, yeah, that, that I don't like that. Make it one on the, one on the field. At a time, not four of them, because because if they all come up at different times, and you kill them all at the same time, they're all gonna have it. So no, not a fan of that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think so because I know how raid operates. So for me personally, I do think that it's gonna be a sort of it's gonna hurt players at least when they when you kill heads consecutively. So the reward for killing them is they come back quicker, and then they come back with no damage. At that point, then you're gonna have to turn off auto to man to manual it, so you don't waste your skills, and then you place well, I don't know, 
well, HP burn, decreased defense. You know, or, or a popular one people have said, why don't you make it possible so no buffs can be added while the while the under servants will. That's a reasonable one. Debuffs can be landed, but no, but no buffs can be landed by them. So what will happen is when they go into full damage mitigation mode, and you lay a debuff, what happens if Poison Cloud comes out? You then go Poison Cloud and block damage. So you go from a turn of unkillable to two turns of Poison Cloud. That's what's going to happen for people. Yeah, maybe I'm looking at it from, maybe looking at it from a glass half empty perspective, but th that worries me. But again, I'll test it next week. I'll do a video going over the differences because I think the rotation stays the same. So what I'll do is I'll just run my uh, Brutal team, which is I can do on auto. My Nightmare is a little bit janky at the moment because mm -hmm. um, I've moved a little bit of gear to make my Brutal one possible because that's where my score comes from. I get my big score from Brutal. I don't get it from Nightmare. Um, my, my big score comes from Brutal. So we'll, I'll test on Brutal next week and we'll go from there. So yeah, please leave a like, leave a comment. Um, just want to say a big thank you for the videos over the last week or two guys. So uh, got quite a decent views off the ones on the weekend, decent views on the poll yesterday. I know which was kind of hilarious, no, two shards. So yeah, definitely a shard in a dream. So yeah, I want to say thank you. Um, I'll have a video back out now next week, next Monday. Um, hopefully going over Cintranos because they're going to be doing the rooms there, uh, the choke points, some of the bosses, um, how I did it. So, yeah. So, thank you for staying with me. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. So, it's me, Big Dave.